Hello everyone. Today I'm happy to present to you this all new 2012 Opel Insignia Sports Tour. Now this car was requested to me about two months ago by one of my long term YouTube subscribers. So I'm very happy I managed to finally get my hands on one of these. In this review we're going to be looking at the interior of the car. I'll explain how all the features work. We'll also start up, look at the engine, go over the performance data and take a look around the exterior. So let's begin. Now this particular version I have here is the Elite, which is Opel's most luxurious and top spec model. Very nice chrome door handles. Black leather on the door panels with white stitching. Your four one touch automatic windows, brushed aluminium handle as well as a chrome door handle. A very nice wooden trim. You've got your standard electric mirrors and if you push down, they power fold as well. Also on the sports tour you get this third dial down here which controls the boot lid. At the moment it's an off, you just press the button and that opens and closes the boot. If you set it to three quarters it means the boot only opens three quarters of the way and max means it opens the full way. You got your two person memory settings for the driver's seat as well as all your electrical adjustments. The power on the car, you just apply the clutch and turn the key. It comes with the Navi 600 navigation system. You can also choose to have the Elite model without navigation. Very good sound quality. You get all your preset stations down here, your traffic control and your park assist. At the moment the park assist is deactivated. The red light means it's active. Also got your climate control, which is standard also on the Elite model, as well as heated seat for the driver and for the passenger sides. And every time you adjust the climate control, it comes up on the LCD screen. This little button here is the air conditioning. You also got your standard options such as recycling, your different fan speeds, automatic modes, and your front and rear defrosting. Now the first thing I should tell you about the navigation before I actually demonstrate it. The car comes with this little uh, box here, navigation SD card. Basically you take out the SD card and you apply it into a little SD slot under the glove box here. You can see it there. You also got your auxiliary import and USB slot in there as well. And that's all you have to do really is just pop it in there then go to navigation. Now, also another thing I should mention, a lot of the controls, such as the navigation and some of the audio controls, are located down here in the center console as well, along with this wheel. So you got the nav down here. Just turn the wheel to the right to do all your zooms. I mean, zooming in, for example, and the left to zoom back out. At the moment, it's showing up we're at the Opel dealership. And also, on the center stack here you got your uh, little touchpad here with four different uh, adjustments you use them and you can navigate across the map so it's a very good system and very easy to use if I press configure you can go through all your different system settings so you got your language time and date, radio settings, phone settings, which basically you can turn on and off your Bluetooth and go through the device list, as well as you can set up a ringtone and go back to your default factory settings. Then you got your navigation settings, so for example you can import and export different POIs and addresses or delete them all together. Then there's the standard vehicle settings and display settings, so it's a very good system all around. And there's also two buttons as well, marked back here, and it can also be found down here. So that there basically is the LCD screen and the entire navigation system briefly explained. It's a very good system and very easy to use. 
and also uh, with the Bluetooth when you have your phone connected you can play your music through the phone just by pressing the CD and auxiliary button it will come up as MP3 play you also may have noticed this button here marked economy mode um, basically that means that the car um, on long distance journeys produces less CO2 emissions and is that a little bit more economical you got your very nice wooden accenting trim going through the center console you also got a leather stitch shift boot this car has the six speed manual transmission to engage reverse you just pull up on this little chrome lever here towards the left and up it also has the electronic parking brake two cup holders and a very nice leather armrest you got your cigarette lighter and ashtray also on the steering wheel itself you got your cruise control settings you also got your volume controls for radio and your different station selection as well as your controls here for muting the radio and answering and cancelling phone calls it's a very smooth leather wrapped steering wheel very good tight feedback got stitching as well as well as this nice brushed aluminium accenting and your sporty thumb grips as well also on the center dial here, sorry this little left dial, there's two uh, things marked there, auto stop and off. Now a lot of you might be familiar with this already but for those of you who aren't I'll just explain it briefly. This insignia here also has a, a 2 liter diesel Ecoflex engine and as part of the Ecoflex uh, trim uh, it basically means that when you come up to traffic lights or a stop sign and obviously you have to stop at them, it means when you put the car in neutral and let out the clutch the engine will cut out. The whole idea of this is basically that the uh, Insignia produces less emissions and it's just a kind of like an extra um, prop as far as economy driving goes. And then to start the engine again you just apply the clutch and it's as simple as that. This car also comes with an auto dimming interior mirror as well as rain sensing windshield wipers. All your interior lighting up here as well as your motion sensors. Vanity mirrors and the sun visors. Also has a little padded sunglasses container up here also has automatic headlights a small little storage area down here so all in all it's shape enough to be a very good car and it is very well equipped the leather seats themselves are extremely comfortable and supportive so let's take a look at the back seat Now as everybody knows the whole idea of an estate car is that it's more spacious than the standard saloon or hatchback version and the insignia is no exception. Legroom and headroom back here is absolutely fantastic, it is very good. The seats are very comfortable. It's also got a nice little uh, center armrest here with two integrated cup holders. So it's a little storage area there. And also you got a little pass through here into the boot itself. Excellent amount of room and comfort back here. You also got your rear ventilation, as well as a 12 volt power deck, and a small bit of storage up here, as well as in the back of each front seat. Also, on this uh, left stock here, I should mention, you got your trip computer. You can just click here for a second clear. And then there's the menu itself. To go through them, just clear that. You use this uh, little kind of padded section here. And you can basically just scroll through your different options, such as your navigation, and your different mileage, and your MPG altogether. So let's turn on the hazards. As well as the headlights front and rear fog lights. As I mentioned, it does have automatic lights as well. It won't touch automatic windows. And we'll take a look around the exterior. Aluminium roof rails. 
The exterior color is known as Water World Blue. This car also comes with 18 inch alloy wheels as standard. You can also have the option for five smoked alloys. It has big xenon protector headlamps with LED accenting. LEDs might flicker due to the camera. It also got your headlamp washers and your lower fog lights with your next Pro Max setting design. Front parking sensors. As well as the signature horizontal chrome grille. Overall styling is absolutely excellent. It's a very good looking car. All versions of the Insignia are, whether you choose the saloon or the five wheel hatchback. In your seat has just two electrical adjustments, height and then there's the lumbar. The rest of the controls are manual. Also has a decent sized glove box as well. Enough room on this side for the navigation setup and the uh, log book itself. And then you got a little extra storage area off to the left. One thing I should point out is these little black pieces integrated into the rear window. Now these here are in fact wind deflectors. It basically means when air is rushing up the side of the car at high speeds, that the air itself is deflected off the fins, basically causing less aerodynamic drag. Also got the shark fin antenna, as well as tinted rear windows and an integrated third brake light into the spoiler there. Has a very nice rear design, very nice chrome accenting. To open the boot, there's a little black touchpad right under here, and it opens automatically. Also, a little thing Opel have done, which I think is very clever, because when the boot is up like that, you can't see the rear lights. So what they've done is inserted a few more down here. So you got your indicators and your brake lights. Very handy. It has a very spacious rear, as you would imagine from an estate car. Loads and loads of room. You can fit pretty much any items you can think of in here. You also got this rear cargo cover. And in addition to that, you can also have this extra little piece here. Now as you can see, it's got four little uh, plug-in bits. They basically plug in to these little import slots here in the boot itself. Basically allowing for a little more extra privacy. I'll leave this down the ground for a second. Underneath the actual boot itself, you've got a secondary storage area for any little small items you may have. Also has these very nice chrome inserts into the boot itself. And to close the boot, you simply press this little button here. Also a little thing I should mention, I'll just turn off the lights first and the hazards. When you go, open, go to open the boot, I made this mistake earlier, you need to make sure that the little dial here on this uh, piece is set to max or three quarters. If you have to set that off, the boot itself will not open. So just a little thing I should point out there in case anybody made that mistake. So let's see how the insignia signs. about 3,000 rpm. It's a very quiet engine. Not too much noise pollution getting into the cabin of the car.
release. The engine is a 2 litre Ecoflex diesel. It produces 157 brake horsepower and has a top speed of 134 miles per hour. It can also produce 255 torques and can easily average 55 miles per gallon. So we'll just finish up the review now. The Insignia Sports Tour is an excellent car. As a matter of fact, all versions of the Insignia are, whether you get a base model or whether it's a saloon or a hatchback, they're all excellent cars. Very well equipped, very comfortable, very spacious, excellent build quality. And the Sports Tour has an excellent amount of boot space. So overall, I'd nearly say it's almost the perfect car. If you're looking for a vehicle with loads of room and it gets very good mileage, Insignia ST is definitely the car for you. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this full net tour of the 2012 Opel Insignia Sports Tour. Please remember to rate, comment and subscribe and please stay tuned. There will be plenty more videos to come. Thanks everyone.